This is my Red Sea Max 65 gallon saltwater aquarium eight years ago. And this is what it looks like today. <gasps> oh no! There's like all of this green hair algae everywhere. I have been working on cleaning the aquarium so often. <laughs> I mean, there's some junk flying in it, but wow, that is so much cleaner already. Nowhere near as bad as before. And like two days later, the algae is all back. So my aquarium is suffering from something called old tank syndrome. When a tank gets to a certain age, it becomes a lot harder to maintain the ecosystem inside of the aquarium. And the problem is that when the tank gets really old, a lot of the bacteria that lives inside of the rocks and the sand is not there anymore. Thankfully, there is a solution. Yesterday, my friend Tyler came over. We're gonna start to replace the rock. So Tyler says that this is old tank syndrome, right? I'm going with that. <laughs> yeah, that essentially kind of... it's, there's an imbalance in bacteria now. The rock is there not only for aesthetic reasons, but because it houses all of the bacteria and helps the ecosystem work. We're gonna take stuff out and eventually replace the sand and the rock. So we're gonna start the process today. <laughs> there's Gatsby just hanging out. He's like, I'm here. <laughs> we do not want to mess with the ecosystem and just replace all of the rock and all the sand all at once. So instead, what we do is we replace half of the rock, let the bacteria discover the new rock that's in the aquarium. Then after about six weeks, we can replace the other half. And we also scooped up as much of the sand that we had in the tank. That sand has been there for eight years. It's dirty. I'm like, you ruined my house. Another difficult thing is I had a lot of anemones that were living in the rock. Anemones are a lot harder to deal with. They're like a living animal and they can move wherever they want in the tank and you cannot just like take it and rip the anemone off of the rock because you'll end up just killing the anemone. What Tyler did was he broke the rock around the anemone and stuck it back into the aquarium. <laughs> There's your house <laughs> We saved the anemones. They're all really small and shriveled up right now, but they should come back. <laughs> the fish are like, what? Where's all my house? Don't worry, you guys. I'm gonna make you a new one. After Tyler came and did the water change, he left me with some real reef dry rock. Since this man-made rock is made for aquariums, it is incredibly porous and allows for a lot of bacteria to live inside. This one is a huge one. I spent a few hours breaking the pieces apart and trying to stack them together. Okay, so this is what I have so far. I'm trying to play with height as usual and depth so it makes the tank look less flat. I think it looks pretty cool. We have this thing called coral putty. All we do is we mold it and then stick it on. But the problem is that you gotta do it really quickly once you start it. Well, this with my hand, it says until it gets white. So then we just stick this in places where we need the rock to hold. I'm gonna stick a petty piece like right there. The rocks will stick together. You just make sure that the back side is not seen by the aquarium. That's basically what you do and that's how you get the rocks to um, make a certain shape. <laughs> now we're gonna place this in the aquarium. There it is. So it's a little bit hard to see but this is what we have. And then the next morning I woke up and check it out. One of the anemones just moved. He moved right up here into this hole. That's pretty cool because that's exactly where I was going to try to place the anemone. Other than that though, check out that rock. It looks so beautiful. Oh, hi Gatsby. And now that the rock is placed, the bacteria will find new homes in the new rock and in about six weeks I can replace the other side of the tank and so in about two months we'll have a totally different looking aquarium. It's already looking a lot better if I do say so myself. The next few weeks I can start sharing with you the aquarium journey again. But other than that it's time for us to start the vlog. Time for me to hype up Gatsby. I'm gonna be Gatsby's hype man. Are we gonna go somewhere? Are you ready to go? Are we gonna go? Yeah. Are we gonna go on a walk? You wanna go on a walk? Oh my gosh! Are we ready to go?
Have you guys been spying on us? There's fur all over the ground. Gatsby, come here! It is that time of the year. It happens twice a year. The big corgi shed. Look at all this extra fur we have here. We gotta brush it all off. I'm gonna use this right now, the zoom groom. So then you can easily just go like this. Ta-da! If your dog doesn't like to be brushed that much, this is like a pretty good tool, I think. But the problem is that this only works when your dog is shedding. He's like, oh my gosh. Oh, it feels so good. So I usually start with this because it loosens up all the fur. Does it feel good? Okay. So much fur everywhere. The Furminator. So this one will really, really just get rid of their undercoat. But it's important to only use this when they're shedding. And this one just like gets everything off. This one some dogs won't like too because it's a little bit sharp. Gatsby, so much fur is coming off. Oh my gosh. That's like the main thing about having a corgi. It's like, oh my gosh. Time to vacuum, sir. Look, I filled up the whole thing. That's a lot. I ordered Gatsby another air purifier because this room is a little bit too big for just this one. I really don't get seasonal allergies, so this is kind of for Gatsby. The blue air purifiers are considered the best, so we'll try it out. Only the best for you, right? Yeah. It's plugged in and it's going. You're gonna have some nice clean air now, Gatsby. And then we can place this somewhere else. They say that even if you have a one large air purifier for a big room, it's better to have small ones all around to help circulate the air better. Look at this cutie cat, he's just like hanging out. What? Right now I am driving over to grab some lunch. I'm gonna try getting Fugetsu. It's kind of like a Japanese street food place that you grab food from. that's like has octopus it's like an octopus like ball beef and onions over rice and we got kushikatsu it's like um deep fried that looks like a shrimp and i think this is uh pork everything tastes so good oh it's salmon ume is like a pickled plum most people don't like it i wanted to try it oh my gosh imagine like drinking pickled juice it's kind of like that I like it. <laughs> right now, we are shipping out the orders from CorgiOnFleet.com. I'm gonna fulfill Margot's order from Washington. She ordered the Ocean Tie-Dye shirt over here. She also got the Corgisaurus Rex shirt. I found it! Okay. I put so much work into all the merchandise, so it makes me feel so nice when everybody's like supporting us. Two dog bananas. Ta-da! These. Thank you so much, Margo, for supporting Gatsby and me. I hope you enjoy the stuff. Right, Gatsby? <laughs> okay. We still have the Japanese Corgi t-shirts over here. This is the year of the Corgi shirt. They're almost all sold out. There's a few left in some of the sizes. And let me know in the comments if you want me to do like a reprint of one of the shirts. Uh, I'll take that into consideration when I do some reprints. Gatsby, we're here to get your acupuncture done. Hooray! He's like, what am I doing here? Let's go, good job. Okay, we're gonna have an, you already got a little alley spot right here. This is gonna be a little bit alley. Oh, good job, it wasn't. Oh, that side was a little bit, okay. This is our right side. All the pieces, very nice. We're still doing acupuncture just because it's like a little treat to make sure that everything is good. It's also a good time to like check up to make sure everything's going on well, right? <laughs> she also checked out his allergies. And one more spot right here. Okay, let's listen. Oh yeah. You 
got a little bit of tracheal noise. Mm -hmm. A little post-nasal drip. So whenever he like leaves the apartment, he's for sure like <sighs> So we got some medicine for that. And he weighs 25 pounds now. So I'm like, Gatsby, you can have as many treats as you want now that you lost so much weight. Sound good? Okay, we got the laundry going. I brushed my teeth. It's time for me to head off to the gym. I'm here with my buddy Jesus. Oh. We're gonna hit some chest and triceps today. Let's go. Let's go. For today's gym tip, I thought I would go over the all-important mind-muscle connection. When doing any kind of weight training, it's important to flex the muscle you're working out. And that's even more important than the movements. So for all these chest workouts you see here, our arm movements don't really matter. What matters is really focusing to activate and exclusively use that muscle to lift the weight. You can see with each rep, Jesus and I are squeezing our chest muscle. Again, it's not about moving our arms back and forth to do the motion. It's about squeezing the muscle. And this applies to all muscle groups you're training. For these tricep workouts, how do I only use my tricep on this exercise? And that's your gym tip for the day. Okay, we're done with the workout. Later on, I'm gonna be going to grab some all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue with some friends. So I'm excited about that. I had to get a good workout in in order to be able to eat all that food. We got two packages from Amazon. Wow, they're all these stickers. Thanks, Christine. Hi Ryan, congratulations on your new Tesla from Isabel from Cupertino. Isabel always sends so many things to me. Oh cool, nice. Yeah, this is super useful, for, especially for like groceries or stuff because the back trunk is just like all open. Oh, perfect. Thanks Isabel. Thank you. Look at this cute corgi. Wow, your body, Gatsby. Look at this cute corgi. Hello, sir. <laughs> Look at that smile. Is it time for dinner? I think it is. Yeah. Who for the corgi? Here it is, sir. So for those of you asking about his back, um, the cyst, we couldn't even find it. I think it totally healed. When we were at the vet, we were looking, we're like, we can't even find it. We only saw like all of his extra scab stuff. Anyway, yeah. Right now, I am headed over to grab some dinner, Korean barbecue. Who's that? It's Nick! Oh, look, there's Sean. Are you excited, Nick? I'm more than we excited. We haven't seen you in so long. Oh, oh, oh look who it is. We're walking over. So we're getting all you can eat, but there's a time limit, so we gotta eat really fast. You know what you want? The food. That sounds good. Yeah. I, I want that too. Can I have yeah. some? I've tried eating it before and it was good. <laughs> so this is Johnny, and that's Sean, and this is Nick. And I'm Ryan. The brisket? Yeah. Oh, these are the ribs. Yeah, I ordered four orders of ribs and look, they only give you four ribs. Kept on. There you go. Okay, these are cooking fast. <laughs> <laughs> Dip it in some salt. 21. Okay, the short rib on there. This is the Korean style. You use scissors instead of a knife. It's Nick's turn to cut. You'll see how. Oh, that's the I told you. It's, oh, yeah. It's not that? a sharp scissors. These are not. These are like kid scissors. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm already getting full. <laughs> oh, I am not. Oh, thank, thank you, you Sean. You. Nick's spicy calamari. Brian, you want some? Yes, I'll take some. Oh. <laughs> we got pork bulgogi. That's the Hawaiian bacon. This is huge. Dude, I've never seen bacon this thick. Nick said that he's getting full too. I mean, I'm getting there. I'm about 85%. I'm about to. But there's so much fat on here that I can't cut it. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? <laughs> Chopsticks are not my utensil. Oh. I know fork and knife. The smoke is mainly going to Johnny and me. Like Sean's getting like no smoke. I'm not and getting you, any. Yeah. Perfect. What is this? Chicken? Chicken. Garlic chicken. We we're like, that doesn't look like chicken. We we're like, what part of the chicken is this? This looks like a sausage. And then Nick was like, well, I ordered oxen tested. Here he goes. Nick's chopstick skills. <laughs> That's why I was like, maybe we should order a fork for him. Yeah. That's how you do the ox intestine. 
What does it taste like? There's like intestines. Oh wow. It's very chewy. Oh, it's very chewy. Very chewy. What's the like, flavor? It looks very oily. It's, it's kinda like if you took a if you took a really thin, tough calamari and then put bacon fat on the back of it. Yeah. yeah. It just tastes like you're eating fat. It's a lot, it, it's very fat. I think we're pretty much done. Sean's like the only one who's eating. Are you full, Sean? Too full. I just wanted to say one more time, I've mentioned it before, but if you see any ads using my videos, please let me know. A lot of people use my videos to make it look like I'm selling their product. I contacted them saying that they can't use my video without their permission, and then they just like blocked me. So I wasn't able to see this ad. When I see the page, it just looks like this. It just says you're blocked. Anyway, yeah. Oh look, there's me. So if you see any of those, please let me know, especially because sometimes the companies just block me because they know they're in the wrong. Ah! Looking good, dude. Gatsby, you are so fit, shiny, and beautiful. Okay, well, it's time for us to head to bed today. I thought I would give you guys the secret word to let me know that you got to the end of the video. Make sure to add the secret word into your comment. But do it in a stealthy way. Today's secret word is rock or rocks. I'm excited to see some creative comments. And of course, don't forget to go to corgionfleek.com to grab some Corgi on Fleek merchandise to help support Gatsby and me. Other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Good night! Hey Gatsby, check out this awesome fan! This is my eight-year-old Corgi Gatsby. He is trying out dog mode in our new Tesla Model Y. In dog